You get the blues. I do. Because it's raining outside. <laughs> you know what? You don't have to have uh. the blues. Why don't you have to have the blues? I don't know. Why? Because we've got the porch. Everything in the back porch. <laughs> we, I was sad. I had the blues because we couldn't cook outside. And I thought, you know what? Ooh, everything in the back porch. Now, we had something that made this possible. I found an old forge. Is that what that is? In an antique store. Now, yeah. think about think about the old crank on it where it yeah. blow the air out and heat the coals up. That was probably a farrier's uh, semi-portable deal. Wow. So how about that? So we're on the back porch today. <laughs> You're cooking. And, you know, we actually cook what we're hungry for and what the situation demands. Right. Okay, first of all, it's nasty out. If rain has come, that's spitting again. But we're not going to stop. We're out of control. We still we're still got to eat. We got to eat. We're going to eat. Now, let's think about time in this process. You hear that? Sizzle. Let's think about, before I even tell you what we're cooking, let's think about timing. You want to bring a meal together in the right amount of time, and you think about what you got to cook. The baked potatoes are generally going to take the longest. Right. Have you ever been to a restaurant that had a really good salt encrusted, baked potato. sometimes yeah. cheese on the outside? Yeah. Tell you what we're going to do. We've had our nice big russet potatoes mm -hmm. soaking, not soaking, we just had a light coat of canola oil. Let's go ahead and take those and roll them in our sea salt and kosher salt. Okay. So we're just going to put a little coating. Now typically your baked potatoes is what takes you the longest. You know, right. you think about that. I've already got my smoker. Or would you like them back? Let's put those on the very back, all as close together as possible can because we're going to need a lot of space. That's gonna get a little noisy. We got frying sounds. And that's the induction fan on this, which blows the smoke up, which is gonna which is gonna come in mighty handy later. So you think about baked potatoes are always good, but put a little salt on that? Are you kidding me? So we got everything started at 350. Why? Because that's what our entree is gonna be cooked at today. 350. Once we get our bacon Cooked. We're going to set some of it aside for a later project and leave some of it in for our Kentucky Bourbon Molasses Baked Beans. Oh, that oh, sounds good. You can't beat it. So we're going to keep our bacon grease in there. How many remember, I can look at my grandmother's refrigerator, my mom's, there's always a little bowl with usually a little plastic on top and right. it's full of bacon grease. Yeah, we have one of those. We got one <laughs> and we use it. So I'm going to take my bacon out. That smells good. It smells like bacon, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. What do you think about my forge? I like it. It's, actually, it's great. It's yeah, a great cool. setup. Now, we're building a little spot down here, a place for cooking. I think you're going to like it. We're going to have this on set so we can do a lot of cooking this winter. When it's cold outside, we can just step right outside and do some yummy stuff. Because I like to cook outside when we can. We can't always. But anytime we can, if you'll hand me that little dish, anytime we can, we're gonna cook outside, because that's what we like to do. All right, now let's cut up some onions and peppers. Right. Now I'm gonna leave some of my bacon grease in there with your handy dandy plastic cowboy chopper. I love it. Do you need this whole onion? I'd say so. You know, they used to mine plastic out in Colorado for cowboys just to Did make they? those choppers out of, yeah. I didn't know that. It was a big plastic mine. Mm -hmm. Glenn used to work at it before he got infatuated with pepper. That's why we've got the gun back there, because Glenn, he's gonna smell the pepper we're putting in this stuff. You know he'd be here. Now I would. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hurt him. Right. Just got rock salt in there. When I see him, if you see him in a distance, I'm just gonna like scare him away. Yeah, just scare him away. Okay. That's good. Okay. I'm gonna pop my onions and my green pepper in here. You put a little red pepper. Now one thing about the green peppers, I really want those to cook down. I want them to get nice and soft. Yeah. I want the, every bit of flavor to be drawn out of there because our beans. We just went ahead and got pork and beans because we want them to be ready quick. You could do it with dry beans and take forever, but no, we're not We're not quick. going for that. So I just got to tell you, I love cast iron. I know you do. But remember, you can do this on your stove. Mm -hmm. Temperature is temperature. All right, so here we are, and we have our onions and our peppers. Those smell good. And our bacon mm -hmm. grease. You see yeah. where we're going? We've mm -hmm. already got the bacon flavor going here. So we're going to take, I don't know, 35 ounces of pork and beans. Yummy. And what we're going to do now, Mr. Farmer, Mix it in. Stir that up. All right, now, if that's not pretty enough, Mrs. That Farmer, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to come in with some of my top secret. It's just a dry rub. You can make your own dry rub. This is a seasoned salt mix. I want a salty taste in there from Marksbury. I want to put a little bit of that in there. 
Now, where are we going, Mrs. Farmer? I don't know. Which Kentucky one? sorghum. Yum. Did you hold that? Made from pure cane, country rock sorghum. For sales. And I'm going to pour some of this top off. Oh, look Yum. at that. Now, that's, to me, that's the flavor that you really need in baked beans. Oh, this yeah. This is me. Now, I'll put probably, look at, look mm, at that. I can smell it. You it smell good. it? Yeah, right? it smells really good. Along with, with your oh. peppers and onions. <laughs> Did that not just make that beautiful? You know what? You want more? I'm going to put some more. <laughs> Why? Because I can. That's exactly one third of a cup. Okay. It's like half a cup to me, but okay. It's exactly one half a cup. Okay. I mean exactly. <laughs> I think they're right. You smell that? It smells really good. Oh, wow. All right. So one more thing we got to come back with. It says Kentucky. Bourbon. Got to have bourbon. A little shot of bourbon. I'm going to say two heaping tablespoons. Oh. Oh. That smells pretty good. Are you kidding me? Mm. Now, what could make this any better? You hear that induction fan going on? I do. Oh, honey, what's that doing? It's blowing smoke. Okay, we're talking about timing issues. We want everything to come off about the same time. Potatoes take the longest. Towards the end, I'm going to turn the temperature up and get those potatoes done so okay. they're squishy in the middle. Our chicken's going to take about 45 minutes. Okay. So we're going to try to time all this stuff out as the rain comes in. Mrs. Farmer, if you'll open that up, we're going to roll smoke across this. The only thing that can make those beans any better is rolling some smoke across them. Oh, yeah. Because we've already got Yum. bacon grease, bourbon, and sorghum. Sounds good. All right, let's clean up and get our next thing going. Now, you've put Italian dressing on your chicken. It's good marinade. On your doves, yeah. on your, on yeah, whatever. Right. But you know what, I thought, why not ranch? And it, you know, people say, oh, what would you use ranch dressing for? Everything. Everything. <laughs> I could drink it. I'm I not, mean, too. Listen. Dip your pizza it, in it. It has this, this horrible little thing attached to it that it's, oh, you know, it's I love just ranch it. dressing. It tastes mm. good. I don't care what you say. And we have our own recipe, and here it is right here. Very easy for you to get to. Where would you go to get that? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. Of course. And don't forget to like our Facebook page while I'm thinking about it. So we open our bag here, and we get about, what, six pieces of chicken here? One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six. I'm gonna use probably a cup, cup and a half. Let's go cup and a half, a little bit more even. Yeah. And I'm gonna take a bunch of chops. Let's say three heaping teaspoons. Yeah. And I'm gonna take some parsley and I'm gonna put in there. A little less parsley. Now, and if you want to, you can mix that up. All right. Now, you can put a little bit of seasoning on chicken, put it on the grill, and it's gonna be great. Right. But remember what we talked about? Let's take something great and make it greater. That's right. <laughs> That's what we're gonna try to do. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some more of this seasoning and I'm gonna liberally apply that on our chicken. Yes, mm, before it goes good. into the wet mix. And that's gonna stay on there and that's gonna be even some more seasoning underneath shake the wet. Now, if you'll turn those over, liberally apply that. Same thing on the bottom. So I've got an abundance of flavor here. It smells good, I, I like your spices. Salt and pepper and then I've got kind of the sweet and the sour in the other one. If you've had Colonel Sanders chicken. Right, the best. It's the best. But you know the first bite you take, mm -hmm. you understand that the first thing you get is pepper. Right. I don't think Glenn's around. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you what, I'm gonna liberally, I'm gonna use probably a tablespoon. Oh good, and I'm not I kidding. like pepper. It doesn't define this by any means, mm -hmm. but it certainly just adds that extra flavor. Oh, that smells See what good. I'm saying? Uh -huh. See where we're going? I, I do. So what we've done is we've enhanced the already delicious ranch dressing. We've already put some of our spices on here. And what happens when you put this on a Traeger grill at 350 degrees? It's amazing. For about 40 to 45 minutes. You want to get that internal temperature up to 170, 175 degrees. You can let that set for an hour, an hour or two. Okay. Or you can put it right on the grill. Let's, I'm hungry. Which we're going to do. Yeah. We're starving. We don't have time to wait. But you're going to take this and you can put it skin side down on the grill. Okay. The thing about this is I am not going to turn that. I'm going to let that smoke roll across. I am not going to turn it. I'm going to let them cook. I'm going to check it in about 45 minutes. I'm going to stick my little thermometer in there, see what the meat temperature is, and we'll go from there. You know, you think rhubarb. Mm -hmm. And for us as kids, it was everywhere. It's more of an old-fashioned right. thing now. We visited Mac 
at Elmwood Farm. He mm -hmm. took us out in a rhubarb patch. He did. That was neat. Isn't that interesting? Yes, and it was. I remember seeing that in the old timers' gardens all the time. Right. You don't see it that much anymore. But we've got some rhubarb. He gave us rhubarb. Again. And when you think about yeah. pie, right? Mom always made pie, and Grandma made pie. And it was really good. Right. So what are you gonna make today? So I thought, well, let's be creative. Let's make a rhubarb pastry. Because you've been making pastries here I lately. Have lately. It's not wintertime yet, that's but you've been right. out of, you made cherry the other day. Right. So I thought, well, why can't we do it with rhubarb? So I thought, let's try it. So he gave us all these. Can I give you a hint what happened up front? It was getting late in the evening, past the time that most people were supposed to eat. We were watching a movie. Yeah. She said, how about some rhubarb, what'd you call them, turnovers? Yeah, rhubarb, yeah. What am I going to say? Well, you no? Gotta, you got to try it. So she tried it and she brought them up. And we had, we've not tried this. Oh my. They were better the next day even, weren't they? Yes, they you didn't want to let them set for a while. Yeah. Oh my. Delicious. Stupid good. Yes, it is. Oh, go ahead, Mr. All right, and it's so easy. I'm just going to cut us some rhubarb. All right, I got a cup of rhubarb. All right. Just cut up. It almost looks like celery, doesn't it? No. Yep. I have got a quarter cup of sugar. Okay. And I put a little bit of salt. Okay. I just kind of shake some in there. What do you think that is? Three, four shakes? Yeah. A little bit of nutmeg. That is exactly a quarter teaspoon. Was it? Yeah. And then the secret ingredients that always went in mom's pie was nutmeg. Just a dash? A little bit of nutmeg. I like nutmeg. And then Grandma Solomon, lemon, mm -hmm. always told me any pie you make or anything, you got to have some lemon juice in there. You smell so, what I'm smelling? I do. It smells delicious. I wish y'all could smell what's going on behind us. I'm just going to squeeze a little bit in there. All right, now we're going to take this, just kind of mix it up. And always, she used to let her set for a little bit, so I'm just going to let it sit like for 10 minutes. Just let the sugar kind of coat on these. And then we're going to go ahead and heat this up and down to like a pasty mixture. And now one thing we're going to add to this too is about a tablespoon of butter. Oh, we can't forget our butter. No. We're just going to let that, it's going to cook down until almost like an applesauce. All right, what next, Mrs. Farmer? All right, we got to wait till that cooks and we're going to chill it and then we're going to make our roll ups. All right. Now we have, we cooked it down. See how it's almost like applesauce and it's kind of disintegrated, but we don't need that much. Then you chilled it. Right, and it took about 20 minutes to half an hour to cook down to that. And I put this in the fridge and that's why I let it chill because we want it cold. So you almost kind of got a thick applesauce. So you can goop it better? Yeah, I can goop it up and we don't need that much. All right, my pie shell's ready to go. And this is just for two of us. I'm making six of these right. is all I make and you can make a ton. You can make 80 of them and I Yeah. Even. And I'm just going to cut this into six, oops, six pieces. Next up, we need an egg. All right. And that's something Grandma always did too. You gotta have an egg. You gotta have that egg on there. I think it makes it shiny and pretty when you do the egg. It does. I noticed your little pastries. They look like professional. Yeah, it makes them all fancy. So I'm gonna make sure these are all coated with egg all the way. And we're also gonna put this on the outside of them after we roll it. And you'll see this little bit of mixture we made is just enough to do six of these. Oh, that rain thought it was gonna shut us down today. Guess what? Didn't mm. do it. Didn't do it. Thanks to my forge right. and my smoker. We All right, scared. is that easy? Beautiful. Now I'm just gonna roll these up. Oh, seal them. They did that, just like. And just seal them. And they, they end up so cute. Yeah, they do. And tasty. And just seal them. And the other day we did these with cherries. You could put anything in here. Mm -hmm. And I'm again gonna go ahead. This will make them all pretty shiny. and shiny. Yeah. All right, and I think we can probably put these in here if you want. Try to cook them. Beautiful. They're beautiful. A little pan. Mm -hmm. Once the chicken comes off, they go on. Boom. Right. Good to go. We'll be good. There's the night. The moon's not shining bright because it's raining and stuff. So they don't call it Bella Nota. But we have a romantic dinner. That's right. We did it all right here behind us. Now again, time and temperature, you can do this in your own oven. Did you light this candle? I like this. That candle. is so romantic. <laughs> so anyhow, look what we've got here, Mrs. Farmer. I love it. It looks too Right pretty out here in the rain. It's yeah. now pouring again. But it's you know what? Look at this. I want you to look how moist. Now that remember, not too long ago, I did a chicken on here. 90 minutes. Had it set on high. <laughs> Try your beans. Kelly snuck over here and tried the beans. She said it tastes like spare food. Oh, that's good. Isn't the it good? beans are really good. She's right. Delicious. Now, the thing about this with the peppers, 
and the onion is fresh. That's good. And the bacon grease. Those pretty, are legitimate. Those good. taste so fresh That's and really with good. the smoke on them, you can't hardly, oh no, I don't think you can get this anywhere else this good. That's sorghum. You can taste that too. It gives it a richer flavor or something. Sorghum. Something called sorghum. Like right here in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Let's just show a little bit of a segment we did a few years ago. Actually, the process it takes to make that. It's amazing. Right here in Kentucky. They're amazing. There's festivals all over the place. Check them out. Casey County, Gregory yes. Lawhorn. That's correct. Yes. With, a, with a handful of cane right over here. Let's talk about what's going on here today. Now, you're making molasses. Or sorghum. 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 What's the sorghum. difference between molasses and sorghum? Well, now, I've read so many stories about it, I don't know what to tell you the truth about it. Molasses, that I've been told, is a darker, black strap type thing. Right. And sorghum is a sweeter, lighter color. Right. So that's about all I can tell you the difference in it. But around here, everything's sorghum. Yeah. But we yeah. call it molasses. All this starts with cane. Cane. When it's growing, it looks a lot like corn. You just, the seeds are very, very small. And you plant it like you do corn. When you see it growing before the head comes on, you'd think it's corn. Yeah. I mean, then after it gets about 120 days old, it's mature. You can go in the field and strip the leaves off, or you can cut it and bring it to the mill or your press and strip it there. It'll hold itself in shape if you'll strip it standing and you break know, the head out. I would imagine, now, the history of sorghum, molasses goes way, way, way back. Way back. All right, now, there were times, I would say, when they were settling this part of the country, they were on the move a lot, and they could, you could pack one of these machines with you. And this, this one, you say, is dated to 18... 18 and 86. You know, I can imagine, when they were settling this country, you know, they probably had them a jar, whatever kind of container they had of this. The whole process was going on mm -hmm. probably in the late 1700s, I would imagine even, early Probably, 1800s. I'd say when we settled this country. The cane was always here. Now, of course, they've refined it and got oh, it down to a certain what, what kind of cane is this right here? This is the, the name is Dale, yep. D-E-L-L. -L. But there's many, many names. Right. Uh, brands, you know, brand names. And if you chew on it, can you get a sweet you, taste you can it? You can chew that, but if you're not careful, it'll make your mouth sore. No kidding. Yep. So it's pretty tough. Yeah, but it all it's sweet. I don't know what it does. It kind of breaks your mouth out a little. So here you are. You got your cane. You got the leaves stripped off. You take it over here, and you got your old broke mule over here. What's his name? Jack. Jack. Yeah, about 12 years old. Yeah. Good old broke mule. So basically, you feed the cane. You push it in the mill. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to actually physically. No. It doesn't. It well, doesn't you draw just it start it. You. Gotcha. And then it pulls it through. And the juices flow out runs out in a pan, bucket, whatever, and you need to strain it three or four or five times. Gotcha. And then put it in the pan and then cook it until it gets 227 degrees. That's the part that, that kind of fascinated me. Not 223 and not, mm -hmm. not 234. No. Mm -hmm. What is it? 27. 27. 227. What happens if it's not hot enough or too hot? It'll be thin. Huh. See, some people like it kind of thick, and some like it a little thin, yeah. but the really right consistency is, is uh, 227 degrees. 220, that's specific. Mm -hmm. All right, once you pour that off, take it over there and cook it up. I saw a guy over there just stirring it all up. I guess you're very carefully looking at the temperature there and seeing what goes on. What happens at that point when it gets that magic 227? You, you pull it off of the fire immediately. Yeah. Say the pan's got four handles. Right. You just get four people and get it off there quick. Now, will you, on a day like this, will everything go into one batch, or will you cook more than one batch? No, it'll just be one. Gotcha. Because it takes approximately six hours to cook it. Oh, wow. So to get two in one day, you'd have to start early in the morning. Gotcha. Of course, we started at 4.30 this morning. Oh, wow. Me and my granddaughter. So you got your broke mule, you got you some friends who are willing to help you out. Oh, yeah. I bet you, I bet you don't have too tough a time getting folks up there. You say in the evenings, a bunch of kids come oh, in. Oh, yeah, like yeah. They like to, this they whole process. this thing. Do you think people have some kind of sense inside, whether they know it or not, they want to know how things were done back in the but old days? I believe everybody has a longing to learn where our ancestors and our heritage right. has come from. A lot of these younger children, they may act like, and you know, they're not really interested, but when they're around something like this, you can see them, their eyes alight, and they want to ask questions about why does this do this, this, this. 
So, yeah, I think we need to preserve our heritage. Yeah. And we that's might have to I go back this. to that someday. Well, you know, if you can do it, you could survive if oh, things yeah. got to a certain point. Thank All you right. for doing what you're doing and All keeping right. the Appreciate traditions alive. That's part of what this show does. Well, I, that's what we need. We need to get back to reality. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking right. time out for us today. Thank you. Uh -huh. Chicken's fantastic. Look at your potatoes. They if look you like... don't want the skin, I'll eat it. Oh, I want it. This looks like something from a restaurant. Look at your potato, the skin. Exactly. Mm. You get them at a restaurant like that, what? and you eat the rest of your potatoes, they say, ooh, that skin's mighty good. Then you eat all skin's the skin, the too. Guess what? Another 10 minutes, that's going to be done. Okay. Dessert. So we get to eat. Just keep eating. We can play at the table. We need dessert. Are you ready for dessert? I am. Because we haven't had enough to eat today. Sorry. Ooh, yum. Look at that. They Perfect. Now, good. this is hot, so I'm going to take it inside pretty quick. Now, what are you going to do inside? I'm going to take confectioner's sugar and add a little water and just whatever. I like it. Nice I make the glaze. Yo! Yeah. Yo! <laughs> and again, this is just confectioner's sugar and a little right. bit of water. What we didn't do the other night, we didn't let them set. So they, they burnt the roof on yes. mouth. Or if you let them sit, look how they eat. If you let them set, they set up like, oh, you know in the store when you get the fried apple pies? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean like at the gas station, the ones yeah. that are way too sweet. Oh, yeah. Look at the little glaze on that. First of all, you put the egg glaze on, and then the little confectioner sugar. Isn't that good? Rhubarb, old fashioned. What do you think? I'll do a little one. Isn't that good? Mmm, mmm, mmm. Look at this side, too. Can I eat all of them? Mm hmm. You know what? Tonight's show was a complete concept, a complete meal. We didn't let the rain get us down. We wanted to cook outside. That's right. So we did. If you can't cook outside, same thing inside. Temperature, time, applies. Right. If you liked our show tonight and you wanted these recipes, where would you go, Miss Swimmer? TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. You would not. I do, every day. So do I. Okay. Because I forget. I do too. Kelly makes me measure. <laughs> That's right. So I try to measure now and I go there. If, I, if somebody asks me, how much did you put in there? I'm like, oh. We never know. TimFarmersCountryKitchen.com. Subscribe. That way something new comes out right. and we tell you about it. That's right. If you are not our Facebook friend, my goodness, what are they waiting for? I don't know. How would you do that? You hit like. Like, click, boom. We talk, we have fun, we give you updates. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun, our Facebook page, and we talk to a lot of folks. <sighs> Moses has seen a booger out there somewhere. Yes, yes he has. But you know what? Half hour's up. That's right. We had a wonderful meal. I might need a nap now. After another bite of this. After another bite of that. But it's all about... Good times. Good friends. Let's eat. Good eats. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see you next week at a brand new Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Mm. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.